Hallelujah, hallelujah. My dear friends, wherever that you are watching this message from, join me as we give praise and thanks to the Most High God. Because God is good and His mercies endure forever. It is just by His wonderful grace that is why you and I have been counted among the living. On this day, the new year that has been given to us, the year 2022, hallelujah. God has just been good. And on behalf of the entire Voice of Hope Media team, I want to say happy, happy new year to you and your family. May God open great doors in your path this new year. May he cause his glory to be on you and may he lead you from one victory to another in this new year that he has blessed us with. God bless you so much for deciding that you will join us today and you'll be blessed with the word of God. And we thank God so much for all the wonderful things that he did for us as far as the gospel commission was concerned. He provided all our needs. He opened great avenues for us to be able to communicate his good news to the world. And I want to say God bless you also for your kind support to the Voice of Home Media Ministry, both financial support, your spiritual support, prayer, and everything that helped us to accomplish all the mission that we planned for the year 2021. And I believe that this new year, there's going to be a lot of challenges, but I still believe that the God who has brought us from 2021 to 2022 is going to give us victory and is going to open great doors as far as reaching the entire world where the gospel is concerned. So keep praying for this ministry. Keep supporting this ministry in every way you can because this is a mission given to us by our God to go throughout the world and to spread the gospel so that we can snatch others from hell to his glorious kingdom. God bless you so much. And once again, I wish you a happy, happy new year. May God cause all your dreams and your plans to come to pass. And may he prosper you and grant you good health and success in all that you do this year. Guess what? We have just begun a new year. This is just the second day of the new year. And any time that we are ushered into a new year, we see the new year to be some kind of a new beginning. We try as much as possible to make resolutions and to live with those resolutions because we have been ushered into a brand new year. At least the calendar system that we use is beginning all over again. We have gone through a 12-month cycle and we are starting again from January 1. The only difference is that the year is no more 2021 but 2022. And because of that, Anytime that we are ushered into a new year, we, we, we have that feeling of a fresh start. If we failed in a certain job, we, we feel like the new year is a new beginning. And because of that, we can start all over again. If we failed in some relationship, if we failed in some business deal, we always have that feeling and that mentality that the new year uh, is going to give us that opportunity to start everything again. And that is true. You know, in life, Sometimes when you are not able to accomplish certain things, you always have the opportunity to start again. So far as God has given you the opportunity to be part of a new day. But then today I want us to talk about New Year resolutions. I know you have made resolutions just as you did in the year that is past. But I know this year you have decided that you are going to stick to your resolutions and make sure that by the end of the year 2022, if Christ has not come, you would have become a better person. You would have accomplished certain tasks. But the question is, how do I do it? Because every year we come up with new year resolutions and before we end the first quarter of the year, we totally forget what we decided to do. Some people decide they are not going to go back to the world again. Some decide they are not going to go back to some evil habits again. But they always end up going back to those things they decide not to do. Question is, how do I keep my New Year resolutions as a child of God? How do I stay true to what I have prayed over and decided to live by as far as my relationship with God is concerned and with my family, my business and everything? How do I keep my New Year resolutions? Today, in the New Year's edition of The Truth That Set Free, 
I'm going to share with you five simple steps that you can follow that will help you to keep your new year resolution. Do not go anywhere. I will be right back. Welcome back once again. My name is Pastor Isaac Apu and this is the truth that set free. This is our first edition for the new year 2022. And today we are talking about how to keep your new year resolution. You know, we hear this almost all the time. We want to do this and that, but we end up messing up and going back to the same old lifestyle that we are about not to go back to. How do I keep my new year resolution? How do I maintain the plan that I have decided to do in this new year? What must I do? What must I know? This is what God is going to bless us with in today's edition of Truth That Set Free. If you are watching this on Hope TV Ghana, I want you to understand that every single Sunday, we are here, same time, on same station. So tell a friend to tell a friend to tune in to the best Christian station in the whole of the country Hope TV Ghana, and be blessed every Sunday morning at 7 o'clock with the truth that set free. Again, if you're also on Facebook, we have a wonderful Facebook page, Voice of Hope Media on Facebook. Just make sure you click on the like button so that you become part of this big family, over 13,000 followers. You become part of this big family where you'll be blessed with the word of God every single day. And then you would also be blessed with the truth that set free every single week. If you're on YouTube, click on the subscribe button and make sure you press the bell icon so that every time that a new message is posted, you will be the first to be notified and you will be blessed with the truth that set free. So New Year resolution. What is your New Year resolution? What have you resolved to start doing? What have you resolved to stop doing? What kind of life have you resolved to live in the year 2022? How do I keep that resolution? Five things you can do, five steps you want to follow that will help you keep your New Year resolution. Step number one, understand that you can't, but God can. This is extremely important. Understand that whatever resolutions that you have made, whatever plans that you have made, whatever thing that you have decided to do, understand that you can't, but God can. You see, one of the reasons why we fail to keep our New Year resolutions almost all the time has to do with the kind of mentality that we have. In most of the time, we tend to base our success on our willpower. Whenever a new year begins, we think that because the year has ended, we have entered into a new year, uh, I have this fresh power, I am going to do the things that I failed to do in the previous year. Whenever you base your success on your willpower, you are planning to fail. Understand that there is nothing spiritually that you can be able to accomplish without God. Understand that there is no business venture you can succeed without God. Understand that there is nothing on your own, your willpower, it is too weak to be able to accomplish the things you have planned to do this year. You can't, but the good news is that your creator, our God, he can. He is the only one who is able to lead you to success in this new year. There is something I love about the Bible that is from the very beginning. From the very beginning, when you read Genesis chapter 1, Verse number one, the Bible says, in the beginning, God, let me just put it there. We know God created the heavens and the earth. But then it is so wonderful to know that right from the very beginning of the world, God was there. So the success of the creation of the world was highly dependent on the fact that God was there in the beginning. And right in the beginning of the year 2022, if the year 2022 is going to end in December, with everything that you had planned to do being accomplished, then God must be in the beginning. So you can't, but God can. So let God lead you. 
This is extremely important. Let God lead you in all your plans. Don't plan ahead of God. Let God lead you. Because on your own, you, would, you are actually going to fail. Remember what you planned to do last year. How were you able to do it? Many people were not able to accomplish their resolutions. In fact, a lot of people forgot that they had each actually resolved to do certain things or to avoid certain things. They forgot along the way. Some even forgot during the first month. That is because they planned without God. So let God lead. Let God lead you this new year. In everything that you do, let God lead you. You wake up in the morning, let him lead you. You are going to meet some people to plan some business, let God lead you. You want to get married, let God lead you. Everything you want to do, let God lead you. Because when God is in the beginning, mm -hmm, when God is in the beginning, your end would be successful. Without God, you are planning to fail. In fact, I want to take this advantage and to invite you, it's because of this reason, to invite you from the 6th of this month, January, 6th January to the 16th of January, we want to begin the year 2022 with 10 solid days of fasting and prayers. This is very, very important. 10 solid days of fasting and prayers. WhatsApp number is on the screen. You can just WhatsApp us and be part of this 10 days prayer and fasting because when we begin with God, then we are assured that everything we have resolved to do, we will be able to do it. Because with God on our side, the Bible says all things are possible. There are some things that when it comes to human beings, according to Christ, it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So the first step in making sure that you keep your New Year resolution is understand that you can't, but God can do it. So let God lead you and he will give you the power to succeed. Step number two. Step number two. Have a plan. Have a plan. They say if you don't plan, you actually plan to fail. Yes, I understand. Probably you wrote down your New Year resolution. You went to this 31st night service. You prayed and prayed and prayed. And you came back home, you know, on fire, excited, energetic, you know, with big dreams and stuff like that. You want to do this and you are seeing yourself, you know, in, in March, in... Uh, uh, June, July, August, you see yourself in September achieving certain things. You see yourself um, thanking God in December 22. I mean, you, you see yourself succeeding. You are now on fire. Guess what? You can never end in success without a plan. So now that you have made a list of resolutions, sit down and have a plan. Let that plan guide you. You see, a plan, whenever you plan towards anything, it can even be now you realize that you are, you've, you've messed up your relationship with God. So this new year, you're not going to go back to those sinful habits. What is the plan? What is the plan? You still have that girlfriend. What, how do you plan uh, staying with her as your girlfriend and still not have sexual intercourse with her? What is the plan? Have a plan. I hope you understand. Have a plan. You want to start a business. So you are going, you, you, you plan getting a loan. What is the plan? What is that business plan? Do you have any plan? Do you have a strategy? How do you intend to go by it? If this one fails, what, do you, what are you going to do to get back the, the, the money to pay for where you're going to get a loan? Have a plan. You see, planning provides a guide for action. When you plan, you actually have a direction that you go in. No Christian is successful without a plan. This is very important. Everyone who plans will succeed with God on his or her side. Planning also helps us to improve how we use the little resources that we have. Okay? We don't have a lot of money. You want to accomplish so much. Have a good plan. Have a God-guided plan. Let the Spirit of God guide you through prayer to come out with a plan that will guide you from month to month and throughout the year so that you can be able to accomplish your, 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 your new year resolution. 
In Luke chapter 14, verse number 28, Jesus Christ says something concerning plan. He says that, suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Wouldn't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to accomplish it? Christ here was talking about a plan. You want to establish something. You want to start a business. You want to, you know, live a better life. You want to go in shape. You realize that you, 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 you've been so lazy. You've been living a sedentary life. You want to lose some weight. What is the plan? What you plan to do, the resolutions that you have set, you've written down, how are you going to accomplish it? What is the plan? So Christ says, suppose somebody wants to put up a building. Won't he first sit down and have a plan and estimate the cost? What is, what is it going to cost me? What is involved in accomplishing this huge task? Once you know what is involved, then you break it down into a plan. The plan can be weekly, it can be monthly, then it's spread throughout the year. So that every single day when you wake up, you know the activities that you are going to do and how they are going to eventually help you accomplish a specific resolution that you have made. So have a plan. Don't be a Christian who has no plan. When you have no plan, the devil would give you plans and his plans would always lead you to distraction. So have a plan. Number three, that is step number three. Start with what you have and learn to be humble. Start with what you have and learn to be humble. This is very, very important. You see, many of us fail to accomplish our New Year resolutions because when the year goes to an end, we go for this 31st night meetings, we come back charged, as I said, we are full of excitement and we want to, we want to accomplish those resolutions immediately. So we actually fail to plan and we want to have everything done big just within the first quarter. So what many people do, especially when it comes to business, some Christians, what they fail to do is that they go in for huge loans to start a business which they don't even have a plan. And then once it messes up, then it turns into prayer. You don't do things like that. Start with what you have. So you have decided to do this, to start this, to travel, to start schooling, to do this. What do you have? You see, when Jesus Christ was with the disciples, the Bible says they had met some people, thousands of them, and they were hungry. The disciples said, send them away. Jesus Christ asked them, what do you have? You see, what they had, when they surrendered to Jesus Christ, Christ had a better plan for the little that they have. When you read Matthew chapter 6, verse 38, he answered them and said, how many loaves do you have? The disciples said, we don't have bread. Then he said, what do you have? They said, we have um, um, only five loaves and two fishes. But with that, with God's planning, they were able to feed the people there. When God called Moses, God told Moses to go and rescue his people. When you read Exodus chapter 4, verse 2, the Bible says, Then the Lord asked him, What is it that is in your hand? Moses said, That is a rod. Then God used that rod to become a powerful tool that he used to work miracles in the presence of Pharaoh. So the little that you have, the little resources, eh, don't rush. Don't be pressured by what others are doing. You see others, they have succeeded, they have done this. No, 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 no. Don't be pressured by them because life is not a competition. Life is not a competition. They may be ahead. You may be behind. But one day you will also be somewhere that they are not. Don't do that. Don't compare yourself with anybody. Don't compare your success with somebody's success. When you do that, you can never accomplish anything. So the little that you have, just start with it. If it's a business, start with the little that you have. If it's prayer, you were able to pray in the morning as well, keep on with that and improve it gradually. Don't try out of us all of a sudden, I'm going to every, every week, somebody say every week, this new year, every week, I am going to fast twice. Meanwhile, throughout the year that is passed, you were only able to fast for one day. That, even that one was just 6 to 12. Now, all of a sudden, this new year, starting January 1, I'm going to fast twice, six to six every week. You are not going to be able to do that. Gradually, start small and be consistent and be improving yourself. And learn to be humble. Learn to be humble. 
Because with humility and small beginnings, God is going to make you great. When you read Job chapter 8, verse 7, the Bible says, Though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter end shall greatly increase. So start small. Don't let the small beginning scare you. It all begins gradually. When you see a mustard seed, it is very small. But when you see that tree, very huge. Small beginning, when it has a plan, it will lead to something great. So don't be pressured. Be humble and start with what you have. Step number four, avoid distractions. Avoid distractions. You see, according to the Webster's Dictionary, it defines distraction as something that directs one's attention away from something else. Simply put, distractions are meant to shift our focus. You are now focused. I know we are in a new year. This is just the second day. You are focused. You, 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 everything is so clear. You are getting somewhere. But there, there are, there's going to come a time in your life this year where certain things would come to distract you. And distractions, they can come in the form of you know, people. They can come in the form of you know, things. They can come in the form of specific places or environment or circumstances. It can even be your thought or temptation. Distractions can come in various ways. These days, a lot of young people are not able to focus because of the many distractions that come their way in the form of social media. Instead of focusing on certain books to be able to achieve a target that they have set, they spend a lot of time on things that are not necessary. So at the end of the day, when the time is up for them to write exams, they feel so much pressure and many of them give up. So try this year, avoid any form of distraction. Don't look at what other people are doing. Don't compare yourself to what is happening in the world and be distracted. Don't think that others are ahead of you. Don't be distracted by any other thing. Focus. When you read Romans chapter 12, verse number 2, the Bible says, don't copy the behavior. This is the uh, New Living Translation. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Did you get that? Don't copy what others are doing. Don't be distracted. Focus. Focus. When you are driving and you are distracted a lot by things that is happening around on the road, you will never get to your destination. Sometimes certain temptations will come your way. Their purpose is to distract you. Certain friends will come your way this year. They have come to distract you. How do you know them? When people come your way and their plan and their goal is not in conformity with yours and they keep pulling you to follow them, understand that these are distractions. Get away from them. Because at the end of the year, you will sit down and realize that you were not able to accomplish anything because of distractions. Sometimes problems will come between you and your spouse, you and a friend, you and a colleague. Sometimes some of these things, they are distractions. Focus. Don't allow problems. Don't allow circumstances. Don't allow people. Don't allow things to take you off the path. Focus and avoid distractions. Be careful of fleshly desires because some of these fleshly desires would take you off the path. Be careful of the things that you watch with your eyes. Be careful of the kind of music that you listen. They have the power of taking you off from your desired ambition and you may be distracted and you'll not be able to achieve your goals. So avoid distractions. Mm? Don't allow your fleshly desires to entice you into doing things that will lead you off your track or your purpose for this year. Focus on Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith, and he will lead you to your successful end. Final step, and that is step number five. And that step is very important. It says, stay connected to the true source of success. 
We began with God. If you want to end with success, then you must stay connected to the true source of success. When you go to, let's say, MTN Ghana to go and buy a SIM card to insert in your brand new phone, as long as you make sure that the SIM card is in your phone, you are always going to be able to make calls. The moment you remove the SIM card, that phone in your hand will be useless. It can never do anything. You can't browse the internet, except probably you connect to a Wi-Fi service, but you cannot do anything. You can't make calls. When you read John chapter 15, from verses 5 to verse number 8, Jesus Christ said something. He said, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you would bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Set branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned up. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. So if you want to stay, I mean, if you want to be successful and fulfill all your new year resolutions, the wonderful plans that you have set for yourself, then listen, stay connected to Jesus Christ because he is the true source of success. It says, I am the true vine. We are just the branches. For you to receive nourishment, for you to receive encouragement, for you to receive all that you need for your success, then you must be connected to the true vine. He says, anyone who is disconnected from the true vine, that person is like a branch that has been cut off from a tree and has been thrown away. What is going to happen to that branch? It's just going to dry up and die. In the same way, if you allow anything to come between you and God this year, that would actually be the beginning of your failure. Listen, my dear friends. You see, if you want to be successful, if you want to keep all your New Year resolutions so that by the end of this New Year, you can look back and say that God has been faithful to you, then you must stay connected to God. Never in your life this year, never allow anything to come between you and Christ. In fact, we are living in the last days of the earth history. And this is the time that we need to stay focused on God. Avoid any form of distraction. Stay focused on Christ. And be connected to the true source. Question is, how do I stay connected? Well, there are two simple things that you have to do. The first one is that you ought to stay connected through prayer every single day. Never neglect prayer. Listen, no great man has ever been great without prayer. Let me take that again. Nobody has ever been great without prayer. Acknowledge God in your life. Pray every single day. That is the only way you can get connected and stay connected. So keep praying. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 17, verse 20, when I love this, Jesus Christ told the disciples, however, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. There are certain things that look, you have resolved to do. You can never do it except by prayer and fasting. Understand, don't let prayer take the place of hard work. This is one of the places that a lot of people get messed up. You need to pray. But remember that he has told us in Exodus chapter 20 that six days you have to work. Six days you have to work. But then as you are working hard, make sure that prayer is what moves you to work hard. So pray a lot. Every single day, as the Bible says, pray without season. That is the first thing you can do to stay connected. The second thing that you can do to stay connected is that you must study the data. When I say data, I'm talking about the manual, the Bible. Study the manual. Let him guide you. Let his instructions lead you. A lot of us are not able to succeed in what we have planned to do because when it comes to what God expects from us, we don't know. And when you don't know what God expects from you, you can never succeed in anything. So stay connected through prayer and stay connected also through diligent study of the Bible. In 2 Timothy 2.15, the Bible says that study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, 
rightly dividing the words of truth. Say the Bible, pray. Say the Bible, pray. Let me advise you this year, don't let a day pass by without speaking to God in prayer and without listening to God in his word. Never do that. Never do that. It is going to be very difficult. Probably you didn't do that in the year past. But understand that with his help, as a point number one, with his help, all things are possible. You can avoid a lot of, you know, internet times and make those times steady times. Because those things that you do, these are the things that is going to help you to achieve your resolutions. At the end of the day, you are going to come back and say, had they not been the Lord, I wouldn't have come this far. My dear friend, this year, God has many wonderful things for you. He has many wonderful things for you and I. It is true. Economically, everywhere, they will say, every, everywhere make hot. Things are difficult everywhere. You know, this pandemic has worsened financial situations. A lot of jobs are collapsing. And so many things are happening in the world. We don't even know which country is okay. But the truth is that if God could protect his people in the land of Egypt, in the midst of all those plagues, then God says, a thousand shall fall on your left, ten thousand shall fall on your right. You would only see the destruction of the wicked. The problems that is going on in the world, when you are connected, God has a way of shielding his people under his way. So stay connected to him and let him lead you. And he will grant you that success that you need. My prayer for you is that this year would be a different year for you. And it's my prayer that this year you would be a child of God, a true child of God. And it's my prayer that this year you would work harder than before. It is my prayer that this year the peace of Christ will flow within your heart. May God bless you. May he shine his face upon you. May he grant you the success even as you decide to live your life with these five simple steps so that at the end of this year, you can come back to God and say, thank you for granting me a sure success. If you have any question or if you have um, any issue you want us to talk about for counseling and prayer, our WhatsApp number is on the screen. Give us a call or send a WhatsApp and then we'll be glad to be there for you, pray with you and then also to help you. God bless you so much. And once again, on behalf of the entire Voice of Hope team, I say happy, happy new year. Remember from the 6th to the 16th of this month, January, we are going to fast and pray. The number that is on the screen, you can send your name and your location to it. We add you to the prayer group and we are going to be fasting and praying every single day for the next 10 days. We meet in the mornings on Zoom and on Facebook and on um, YouTube and in the evenings we will meet but every three hours, we will send you prayer card where you pray with so that throughout the day for the 10 days, you will be in serious prayer mode. God bless you. And remember, the Bible has said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Shalom.